So first I'm going to show you how to add these D-rings and these particular ones have the little bar and you're just going to want to eyeball it. I'm going to be adding it to about the level of the bottom of the zipper to these three stitches right here. So cut you a length of yarn about 12 inches. This is probably a little too long. And then just watch me carefully. I'm going to basically be casting on as if I were going to be knitting. So basically you put one end through, but you leave a little loop on the other side and put it back through it. So I'm just going to continue doing that until it covers the entire bar there at the bottom. So here you'll see I have four stitches that you can see, and I'm going to add one more because it doesn't quite cover the bar. So you should have five stitches cast on here. And I'm just going to line it up to the bottom stitch of the three that I pointed out to you. So these three here. And I'm just going to grab a smaller hook. You can't really use a yarn needle with this yarn because of the internal contents of the polyfill. So I'm going underneath the stitch of the bag and I'm pulling the end through. Then I'm gonna take my hook between these stitches here and grab that tail through. So essentially you're whip stitching through. Now I'm going to go to the next stitch on the bag itself and I'm going to grab that tail again and draw it through to the other side. And then I'm going to go in the next stitch in between the next two and grab the tail through. And one last time. I'm going to go through the next stitch and pull the tail through and go through the last two stitches there. To further secure it, I am going to take the tail through the next stitch. And now to make it look nicer, I'm going to take the tails to the inside to finish it. So just grab your hook and bring those tails to the inside of the bag. Now I'm just going to knot it off several times so that it's secure. And this is what it should look like. It should look very professional. And then you're just going to weave those tails in really well and cut them. And then you're just going to repeat the process to the other side. Now I'm gonna show you how to make a matching strap to the amaryllis bag. It's a really sturdy strap and it's very quick to work up, especially in this material. So I'm going to be adding the strap to this bag that I showed you in the video. And I'm gonna be using some swivel clasps. Here's the container that they came in. I got them from Hobby Lobby. 
Really, you could even go up to one and a half inches, but I'm gonna be using this one inch size. I'm also going to be using the same hook that I used for the back, an eight millimeter hook. And to refresh your memory, this is the yarn that I used for the bag. So I'm gonna use what I have left over from this bag. It really doesn't use that much yarn. It requires very little. And essentially, I'm just going to make a chain until it measures the length that I want, which I'm showing you in this picture here. I'm going to be making it about 42 to 45 inches long. It really just doesn't matter. So I'm just going to chain. You do not need to even worry about multiples with this stitch pattern. Just chain until it measures the length of your strap plus about two inches because you're going to be sewing it on to the swivel clasps. So looking at your chain, normally I tell you to work into this bump in the middle here, but I'm not going to let you do that today. I want you to go into the back loop of the chain stitches. So in the third stitch over from your hook, I want you to make a half double crochet in the back loop only. Make another one in the next stitch. Now I'm not going to spend a lot of time showing you how to do the half double herringbone stitch because if you're doing this to match the bag, you should already know from that video. So essentially we are working our half double herringbone stitches into these chain stitches. So this is just to refresh your memory. We're working around the post of the last half double crochet every time, going backwards and forwards. So put your hook into the previous stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over and go to the next open stitch, yarn over, go through all four loops on your hook. So you're just going to continue this half double herringbone stitch pattern all the way across your chain and I will meet you back. So here I am at the end. I'm going to chain one and turn. Now this is to help with the rolling up. It tends to curl up. So I'm just going to start a row of slip stitches all the way across in every stitch that I just made. So just continue making slip stitches all the way across and I will meet you at the end. So here I am at the end. I'm going to chain two and turn so that I am working along the foundation chain at the bottom of our stitches. And this is just going to further secure your strap. This yarn is also very stretchy, so it will help prevent the stretching that tends to happen with this yarn. It's going to make an extremely sturdy strap that will match your bag perfectly. So continue making slip stitches all the way down. So I'm just going to show you really briefly, this is what it should look like when it is done. And if you decided to add the D-rings, of course you would just clip them right on and you are ready to go. For this bag, I didn't have any matching D-rings, so I was just going to clip it to the bag itself since it's very sturdy material. You can do either one. You can also turn this bag into a belt bag. What you would need to do is make small rectangles and sew them to the back side of the bag to make belt loops, and then slide the strap through and hook them together in the back around your waist. And that is it. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for watching.